Welcome to the Conversation Lab. I'm Don Schaefer. If democracy begins in conversation, then we need to nurture a culture where ordinary people like us routinely talk about those things that help us understand each other, whether it's about climate, race, religion, gender, or politics. When we're trying to make sense of our city and the world we live in, every question comes with a set of assumptions about the nature of ourselves and our place in a larger world. The Conversation Lab provides a safe place to talk about some of those things. This program is produced by CFRO-FM in Vancouver. It's available on air and online on various platforms, and we appreciate the help of Vancouver's community groups. Our conversation today is with Gaddy Conti George and Elise Whittington about a documentary they produced called Mr. Jane and Finch. Mr. Jane and Finch is really Winston LaRose, who's an 80-year-old Guyanese-Canadian activist who threw his hat in local politics and met with racism in the Canadian political system. Spoiler alert, as Winston doesn't win. However, he's an amazing man, and Getty and Elise share some wonderful moments with him, what it was like and how they're making a difference in Canadian independent filmmaking. Would you mind introducing yourselves and telling me a little bit about who you are and what you do? Um, sure. Uh, my name is Gaddy Conte George. I am a filmmaker uh, based in here in Toronto, um, Canada. I am a, mainly a documentary filmmaker. I'm a director, producer, and um, sometimes I edit. And uh, yeah, that's me. Elise? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I am Elise Whittington. Um, I am the development producer at Oya Media Group. Um, Gaddy actually, along with Alison Duke, <laughs> is the co-founder of Oya Media Group, which is um, a production company based here, out here in Toronto. Um, I've been in film and television for about uh, six years in various capacities um, throughout, um, mostly um, sort of focusing on the business affairs side a lot, um, as well as um, financing. So is is it is it uh, Oya Media Group or is it OYA Media Group? It's Oya. Okay. Okay. I was right the first time. So can you can you talk a little bit about uh, Oya Media Group and how it came together and and uh, what you were thinking uh, in the initial formative stages? Oya Media Group was uh, founded in the near the end of 2018 by myself and Allison Duke. And both of us uh, had been working, you know, in our own silos. We both had our own production companies. I had Metro Media. She had Goldilocks Productions. And um, we had been, you know, working our own, our own silos for, you know, many years, you know, um, running our own production companies and kind of got to a ceiling, you know, on your own as, you know, solopreneurs. Um, we kind of, you know, you can only work on so many projects at one time. You can only take on you know, you know, a certain level of budget. And we both have had our eyes on, you know, bigger projects, you know, having multiple projects going on at once. And um, we had uh, worked on a short um, documentary series together, Allison, as an executive producer, where she um, brought five black women directors together to direct short documentaries for the Kua Benjamin Legacy Project. And I was one of those directors. And so that was... Um, I think w one of the first times well, um, that we worked on a project to, from start to finish, Allison had consulted on a project of mine years before. Um, and um, so after, after that experience, um, you know, I loved working with Allison, you know, both had the same kind of work ethic and, and things. And so when um, I started, I met Mr. LaRose and I mm -hmm. had this idea to do the documentary, uh, Mr. Jane and Finch. Um, I was, you know, three months postpartum of, with my second son and I absolutely did not want to take on another project because when I had my first son, I was in post-production on my first feature and I never really had a maternity leave. So I just did not want to work at the time. And so I called Allison to say, Allison, you know, this is, there might be something here. I can't exactly not pass on it or not do it, but... <laughs> I think if we work together, I think we might have a, a good project here. And so um, she came on board right away uh, producing and um, and then we started 
developing Mr. Jane and Finch for about a year. Uh, we got the green light from CBC, and at that point, we were still trying to run the production with our two production companies. It didn't make any sense, and we both just, at that point, kind of had a few other projects on the go, and we're like, you know what, why don't we just join forces and create a production company, um, you know, where we can tell, you know, bigger and, you know, uh, and, and stronger stories, you know, and more stories. And so that's kind of how OEM Media Group um, uh, came came to be. Wow. <laughs> it's a great story. And congratulations, by the way, on your son. Oh, thank you. And, <laughs> and, and for being able to organize uh, your first production, which is terrific as uh, under the uh, under the new company banner. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, it was kind of full steam ahead. I think it's kind of been nonstop. I mean, it's hard to believe that it's just over three years since we um, formed Oya Media Group, just with the amount of, I think, projects that have happened and the amount of things that have just happened to us, you know, from the mm -hmm. Canadian Screen Awards. And, you know, now we have two feature documentaries in production. You know, it's kind of kind of a whirlwind for sure. Elise, how about you? How did you come to the group? I actually first met both Alison and Gaddy while they were working on a separate project, which is still related to Oya because at, the, at, the, at its heart, Oya is about um, like showing, showing um, content that amplifies Black experiences. And I actually met them having worked for someone else, another Black-owned production company, while they were sort of now getting on the ground on the other part of Oya, which is our nonprofit. Um, and so they were they were um, at that point um, sort of getting the emerging filmmakers program off the ground, which is a sort of a program to help um, youth, black youth um, enter the industry, um, specifically for film and television. And that's initially where I met them. And then um, maybe about a year or two after that. Um, they had, I, I heard that they had had a company that they had joined forces and, um, and, and created. And I was like, this sounds like a great company for me. I would love, I would absolutely love to sort of be a part of this production company as it's, as you know, as it grows. Um, and I have been, you know, I've been here for about, well, I guess, two, two and a half years now. It's going really, really fast. And I feel like, yeah, and I, and, and, and I'm just, um, I guess, so pleased to be a part of the production company from its early stages and hopefully as it grows. Yeah, even more. Yeah, there's so many questions I want to ask, especially about the Emerging Filmmaker Program. Maybe we'll come back to that. I'm, uh, Gaddy, I'm struck by uh, uh, one of your comments about uh, you were introduced uh, to Winston LaRose or you met Winston LaRose and... Uh, just having watched your documentary, he just seems like such a wonderful guy uh, and, and so charismatic and engaging. Uh, what was it like when you met him? I mean, how, I mean, how did you come to meet him? Yeah, so um, we had a mu mutual friend, um, Yushek Koroma. And, um, and Shek, he's the type of person who, you know, would give me a call and be like, I know somebody, you should do a documentary about them. <laughs> and I normally get a call from him, you know, once a year, once every couple of years, you know, with somebody who has a fascinating story that I should do a documentary about, you know, because he's always, you know, a big supporter of, of everything I've done my um, entire career. And, um, you know, he's very much like an uncle to me. And and so after I had, we had done um, the Kua Benjamin Legacy Project, Th those projects, because they were about um, Black Canadian activists um, and their legacies, and the majority of them had all passed, actually they all had passed. So it was really based on archival footage. And so uh, a few months after that film, um, those films came out, he had said, you have to meet this man, Winston LaRose. He has all the archive that you had in that short film you did. You need to meet him. I'm like, okay, okay, sure, 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 sure. You know, um, I'm like, I'm pregnant, leave me alone. I'm not working on any new projects. <laughs> and then um, when my son was born, he just, he wouldn't stop. And, and then he came over to meet my son and he's like, okay, but, but seriously, you have to meet this man, Winston the Rose. And I said, okay, fine, stop bothering me. I'll come up, brought my, my son in tow, you know, my baby carrier. And we went up to York University where uh, Winston at the time, he had his office at the Harriet Tubman Center um, on the campus. 
And um, he introduced me to Mr. LaRose, and um, he, he had Mr. LaRose also bring a stack of DVDs with him from his archive. And he just was like, I brought my laptop, he popped in a few of the DVDs. I'm watching footage that I would have loved to have in the short film I made. And I just, like, my head was spinning. I saw footage of the Million Man March. I saw, you know, footage of, like, Dudley Laws, Charles Roach, you know, marching in Queens Park in the 90s, you know, seeing all this amazing archival footage. And, and then, so I thought, okay, that's amazing. This archive is there. And then just to meet Winston, I think we spent the afternoon um, in his offices. You know, my son loved him, so I'm like, bonus points there. Um, and, you know, we hit it off. And he's such an engaging, engaging man, you know, like, I, I don't know, anyone who meets uh, Mr. The Rose, you just kind of, you know, you just love him. You like, you're just like that. I would love for him to be my grandpa. Like, it's just um, an incredible spirit. And, and so then after that, we just kind of continued talking and um, getting to know each other. And um, I, I kept, I would go back up to York University uh, just to, you know, talk with him and get to know him. Um, and then eventually, you know, really got to know him and, um, you know, made, made the film. So where did the uh, idea for Mr. Jane and Finch come from? He's, uh, I mean, he's, he's just, he just seems like such an amazing guy. But uh, you took on a, uh, a project more than just about the man. You took on a project about a, uh, a part of Toronto. You took on systemic racism. Uh, you took on a lot of issues in that documentary. Can you talk to why and how and what were some of the issues? Yeah, well, so originally the entry point was his archive. And um, that's so that initially was a story I wanted to tell. But every time I would go up to York University or, you know, the, the Jane and Finch, because York University is located in the Jane and Finch community, um, every time I'd go up there and I'd walk down the street with him or, you know, even at his office, there would, we'd be constantly being interrupted by people who were just like, Mr. The Rose, you know, can I talk to you for a second? Mr. The Rose, can I give you a number? Mr. The Rose, I need to, I need some advice, you know, and then people would walk down the street be like, hey, Mr. Jane and Finch. And so I'm starting to see like, this man is more than just a man who's documented community. Who is this man? And so I started doing a little bit more digging, talking to more people, and then just seeing the interaction all around us, I realized kind of like this man is like the stalwart in this community and he really represents like that 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 community activist, that person who is embedded and ingrained in the community. He cannot walk like we couldn't walk ten feet without someone um, you know, either saying hi or giving him a hug or some kind of interaction. So I, I knew like, like legitimately this man is a man of this community. And so there'd be no way of telling the sto his story without including the community. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that, that's kind of where it went. And then right as we got the green light from CBC to go into production, he tells us that he's running for city councilor. And so that put a whole new spin on, on this story. It was gonna be a story about a man, a community leader, a man who has, um, you know, because one of the things that is really important to him is the idea of erasure and how that appears, and especially erasures of black communities. And that was one of the core reasons why he documented so much of the community and the black community in Toronto and Canada um, internationally over the past 50 years um, was to make sure that our existence was known and there was, wouldn't be that erasure. And then that also ties to his community of Jane and Finch and why he ran for office, because um, he, there's a lot of gentrification going across around across Toronto. Mm -hmm. um, and in that Jane and Finch community uh, there right now, there's a, a, tra a transit expansion happening. There was a subway expansion that, ha that has happened. And so, you know, real estate's going up and gentrification is taking place. And so he wants to make sure that the community doesn't miss out on the opportunities that this revitalization of the community would have. Jane and Finch, you know, has been struggling with, um, I think, this negative stereotype, you know, since the 60s, since the 70s, since it had massive population growth without any kind of, you know, urban planning to go with it. I have to imagine that the filming of Mr. Jane and Finch was a profound experience in so many different ways. Uh, what did you learn? 
Oh, I learned so much. I mean, the thing is, one thing, like, I, one thing, I, to, to be honest, I really struggled with 